And there we go, everyone. Hello. Welcome to today's stream. And uh, welcome, shall we say, to a little thing that we're going to do first. Boom! Expeditions, guys. Expeditions. Who else is excited? I'm rather excited. I must say, I'm actually rather excited. <laughs> ah, good times, everyone. Good times. We knew it was coming. Um, we knew that there would be another game from Sabre coming. We didn't know what it was going to be. We didn't know whether we were getting more SnowRunner, a SnowRunner 2, or, as it turns out, something entirely different. We're getting Expeditions, a MudRunner game. Now, it's actually kind of... It, it's it's interesting, is what it is, guys. It's very interesting. Um, we'll get into why um, as we go through this. What I've what I've done is I've got the the little video that they put out earlier this week. I've got that lined up. We're going to have another look through it, uh, just to kind of refresh our memory on it. Uh, and then I've prepared some screenshots and. Uh, downloaded a few extra pictures uh, from like the Steam page and stuff like that uh, to pick out a few interesting bits and bats. Some of them you might have heard of, some of them you might have cottoned on to already yourselves, uh, but we're just kind of going to cover the whole thing, you know, uh, and I'm going to give my two cents on what I think, because honestly, um, the more I hear about this, the more kind of intrigued and fascinated I am by like what kind of game this is going to be. So yeah, before we get into today's SnowRunner stream, we're going to take a look at this. Uh, we're going to have a quick discussion and then we'll get on with the off-road trucking, as they say. Uh, so let me just get this wired up here correctly. We'll have a look at these screenshots in a second, but first let's just turn that off for now and let's bring up the actual video that Saber released earlier this week and we'll have a quick watch and uh, just refresh our memories. Behind all great discoveries lies a journey. Journey, guys. Sure is going to be a journey, One of anticipation isn't it? and adaptation. <sighs> the future is with us. Of hope. <sighs> that had me very excited, by the way, guys. Each step matters. For every obstacle, there is a solution. So crisp, doesn't it? Also excitement. <laughs> For every task, a tool. New stuff. All good, you know, all good stuff here. For every destination, an expedition. Expedition. we go that was the video so let me just bring those screen caps back again here we go so not a lot given away lots a lot of stuff teased um and yeah a lot up for debate so I'm going to go through this in somewhat of an order. I mean, if you guys want to chip in at any point, do do fire in your comments uh, as we go along here. But otherwise, I'm going to go through this and give you my thoughts on a few things that I've noticed and a few things that I think might be uh, what's happening with this game. So let's... Uh, Go. 
go. Right. So, vehicles, first of all. Lots of them on display. Not necessarily all in the video. Some of these um, only popped up on the screenshots on the Steam page. So if you haven't checked that out, you might not have seen these. Um, but yeah, so we've got the Don. Don 71. Um, looking... I must say a lot swankier than it does in SnowRunner. Um, and I'm not just talking about the paint job. I'm talking about all of the rest of it. <laughs> the, the, the bumpers, the roof attachment, the tyres. It's a whole new beast. It's, it's a big boy now, you know. But, you know, nice to see uh, some lesser used vehicles being kind of showcased here early on in the trailer. Um, we also saw the Yar, Yar's back, uh, again, with lots of extra bits on it. You notice down the sides, we now have um, fitting points uh, for fuel and repairs, which looks pretty good. And on the bumper at the front, there's also a fuel can behind the grill. Interesting place to put it, I will say. I'm not quite sure whether I would want... Fuel t a fuel tank right behind the grill designed to absorb impacts. But practicality aside, nice to have some extra modelled bits um, on these vehicles. Uh, and then the Scout 800, looking like the Don, suitably beefy, <laughs> much beefier than it ever did before. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of liking these new additions that they're getting, these vehicles. Uh, so this was... Ah, this is the first screenshot that I took from the Steam page. So we've got the Warthog here. Uh, one of the smaller off-road class trucks. Um, generally not used, you know, in, um, in SnowRunner. At least from my perspective, I've never really used it. Never. I've never found a use for it. Because every other truck that I've had has been more capable. But here it is. Um, this is another screen from the Steam page. And this one I've got on here because it's actually showcasing three vehicles. Uh, again, only one of which appears in the trailer. We see the in the background, in the very background, we see the Bandit. Uh, KRS Bandit. Um, next to that, I believe that is the Loaf. The Khan Loaf. Although it looks kind of like a futuristic minibus here than it, than it has done in the previous uh, incarnations. And we also, uh, off to the left hand side there, we have the Step Crocodile. So another small off-road class truck. Um, you're kind of starting to see a theme here, guys. Uh, or at least I hope you are. Another vehicle, this time back to the trailer again. Uh, the Action. The, uh, what is, who's, who does the Action? Is it the, the Zeke's Action? No, it's not the Zeke's, is it the Tuz? Tuz Action, something like that. I can't quite remember. They're all fabricated, made-up names anyway. <laughs> but we've got the Action. That's another small, like the Warthog, like the Step Crocodile, very small, off-road class trucks. Um, nice little view of the Sentinel. Uh, Khan Sentinel here. Um... Back to the trailer, nice kind of overview vista there, very nice indeed. Um, and then this one did make an appearance in the trailer in a snapshot, but this screenshot is actually from the Steam page. You get to see two trucks here. We have, in the background, we have the Bandit again, but in the foreground here, we have the uh, Ankh Civilian. Um, which is nice. Nice to see uh, the Ankh civilian there. Hopefully be more useful in this game than it has been in previous games. Um, can't quite really see what it's doing there. It looks like it's just pootling along, towing some, towing the bandit, maybe. Don't know. Then we get to this beastie. Not a clue. Uh, <laughs> from what I've heard, it's uh, it, it's it's basically an armoured personnel character, carrier, kind of like the Tatarin. Um, I believe it was the Commodore or something like that. Um, 
believe it's Eastern European, or maybe just European. I'm not, I can't quite remember. Um, I did hear rumblings of where this was from, um, but it is based on a real life truck. So, hey, new manufacturer, new trucks, always nice to see. Maybe getting it in SnowRunner in the future? Uh, oh, right, okay, so those are all the vehicles that we have so far seen, uh, either in the trailer or in screenshots. Um, interesting thing to note is that they are all either scout vehicles or small off-road class trucks. Uh, we have not seen any... Uh, heavy duty trucks, we've not seen any highway trucks, and we certainly haven't seen any heavy trucks. Things like the Azovs and all that kind of stuff, nowhere to be seen. Which leads me to believe that this game is going to be more about um, getting places um, and scouting than it is about cargo delivery. Now, in the trailer we did see the bandit with what looks like some sort of flatbed at one point but it looks more like a flatbed designed for vehicle transport um, it had what looked like the little loops on the side um, of the flatbed for where you tie cables to to tie to the wheels and everything it didn't look like the kind of attachment designed for cargo delivery which makes me think that this game is might not have any cargo delivery missions it might all be about reaching hard to reach places scouting things um going out taking scans we've seen the seismic vibrator um making a comeback in the trailer so maybe rather than huge large-scale transportation missions which we see in snowrunner it's going to be more about getting somewhere, taking a scan, and getting out again. Um, whether that's everything or not is... We don't know. We don't know enough about the game to completely make that kind of speculation just yet. But I would not be surprised if we don't see any of the heavy trucks. I, I would not be surprised if we, if we don't see them at all in this game and we see more of the small-scale trucks um, designed for, like, rock scrabbling scrambling and stuff like that. That would be more my um, more my idea of what this game is all about. Hmm. Ah, coffee to keep the mouth going. There we go. Right. <laughs> Moving on to features and equipment that we've seen um, in the trailer. First, the camera drone. This thing looks very interesting. I think this is what we're going to have instead of watchtowers. Uh, I think that in order to scout ahead, we will have to deploy this thing um, in order to, to go out into the wilderness, fly over the landscape, maybe take like some scans of the map. Maybe it has like a kind of scan thing in it, or maybe we have to take pictures or something like that. Um, that will then reveal the map to us so that we can actually see where we're going and where we can go and can't go. Um, interestingly, it has printed on there a distance and a height limit. Um, well, I say limit. Is it going to be the limit? Is that going to be how far we can deploy these drones? I'd imagine they will have some sort of limit, otherwise you'd just be able to fly out and scout the whole map and there'd be out, done, dusted. So I think that we will have a limited amount of scouting that we can do from the air, and then it will be a case of sending out a scout vehicle in order to go further. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of the feel I'm getting. Um, and it also looks like, from the size of this thing, next to this cabin here, it looks like this is going to be a base-situated um, drone. It's not going to be like a little tiny thing that you could deploy from your vehicle. Because uh, if we go back to the start here, 
it is showcasing a little vehicle mounted drone or what looks like to be possibly a vehicle mounted drone um, here in the title card. If we do get that, the range on it, I imagine, will probably be a lot less. Maybe that'll be for like just popping over the ridge and taking a scan of something and coming straight back. Because um, I think the large scale scouting um, with the drone is probably going to be with this thing. And like I said, I think it's probably going to be instead of watchtowers. Um, I I can't imagine they would have this and watchtowers at the same time. It it, it seems to be doing the same kind of thing. Um, and doesn't really, watchtowers don't fit with the whole kind of exploring the wilderness kind of idea, you know? So we'll see, but that's, that's what I'm thinking. Um, yeah, so I, I include this shot as well, kind of drone going out. Obviously there we've got a height, we've got a distance, uh, and at the bottom we've got a signal. Now I'm thinking that signal will degrade the further away from base we get, or maybe if we drop into a valley or something like that, the signal strength will go down. And if it drops too low, we lose the drone maybe and have to build a new one. I don't know. There has been information on base building in this game. Like you can put additional bases down. You can assign like scientists or something to certain buildings to make certain things you have better. Um, absolutely no information on that. That is literally just kind of gleaning that information from the text on the Steam page. So it's kind of questionable at the moment. We'll see what happens with that. But um, yeah, we'll 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 see what happens with the drones. But like I said, I think it's going to be our new scouting method instead of watchtowers. Now. Alongside the drone, this thing, very interesting. Deployable anchors. Um, this makes a lot of sense if um, the terrain is going to be like we have in this image here. If it's going to be um, very rocky, no vegetation, no places to get traditional winch points. Because generally winch points in SnowRunner are things like trees, uh, lamp posts, um, uh, other solid like metal beams that have been stuck into the ground, stuff like that. In this kind of environment, we wouldn't have that. So these kind of deployable anchors, I'm imagining we might have them on like our scout vehicles um, as a frame add-on and we can select to Deploy one at a certain point, position it, and that will allow other trucks to come along and use that anchor point to get up somewhere that they wouldn't otherwise be able to do. Like, for example, the Action here climbing a literal cliff face. Um, yeah, that is interesting. And also, another thing that I noticed on here, it said it supports up to £30,000. That to me suggests that these winch points are going to have weight limits. Now that's probably not going to matter if you're using a scout, but when you're using even just slightly bigger trucks like the Action here, that might actually come into play. Like I imagine like the bigger trucks that we've seen in the trailers, like the Ankh and the Bandit, might actually weigh more than thirty thousand um, pounds. I haven't checked the data on that so don't quote me um, but I have a feeling that these anchor points are going to have a, uh, a limit to what they can hold or what they can support uh, and above that maybe we lose them maybe they ping out of the rock and we have to go back and deploy a new one who said who's who knows but very interesting. Um, likewise, on the winch here, it also has a load capacity, 15,000 pounds. That is a lot less than the anchor. Um, we see the Yar towing the bandit here. That to me suggests that that is an okay load capacity. 
Um, but if that's the case, why is the anchor point thirty thousand pounds? And that's that's what's got me kind of thinking: is that weight limit actually going to matter, or are they literally just putting it on there to, like, you know, put some lines of text on to make it look fancy? Um, they could be. They could be. Is it? Is is the actual weight limit going to matter? It would be interesting if it did, because when you think about it, the mechanics of a real life uh, anchor point, the mechanics of a real life winch, they would have load capacities. Um, they would have the uh, ability to break if you overstress them. Um, I know we kind of have mm -hmm. something a little bit like that in SnowRunner, like if we hook a winch point up to a win up to, up to we hook a winch up to a winch point that can't support the weight of what we're trying to pull on it, it will snap the winch point. Um, but basically that happens with when you try to attach to a sapling type tree. You know, you attach to a lamppost, doesn't matter. You attach to a big tree, doesn't matter. It's not going to break. Um, only very specific kinds of winch points break. Um, so, again... What's the details here? What What is this weight limit and is it going to matter at all? Who knows? We'll just have to wait and find out. Moving on, metal detector. Much better design than we currently have in SnowRunner. Let's be real, guys. The metal detector is honestly the least used add-on in SnowRunner ever. It is utterly pointless because everything that you need to find with the metal detector can be detected with your eyeballs if you know where to look. Um, and nicely enough, the game gives you a great big yellow circle of an area of where you've got to look for items that you've got to detect with the metal detector. And then it'll even show you on the map once you've gone reasonably near them, that there is some sort of object there. So the metal detector, utterly pointless. They're bringing it back as a roof-mounted add-on for scouts. Now that is intriguing because it actually means that, you know, that might mean that they're putting a better use to it. That they're actually, you know, they've, they've, they've taken a look at SnowRunner, they've noticed that it just doesn't work in its current form and they have re, uh, redesigned it and completely uh, redone the system. Um, items detection by colour system with an augmented reality display. That to me sounds like we're going to get some sort of topographical map on the ground around our vehicle when we activate this thing and different things will Hang up in different colours uh, and we'll be able to uh, find specific things, maybe even buried under the ground, um, which would be great. Which would be great. It's like a little scavenger hunt. That would be brilliant. I love that idea. So, you know, again, hopefully good progress. And then we have this thing. Um, this is not in SnowRunner at all, but apparently it was in MudRunner not really played Mudrunner, so I don't know. I never even knew this was a thing, but a real-time what-a-depth kind of um, warning system? Yes, please. Yes, please. That is so cool, because that means you can actually go into rivers, you can actually go into lakes, and you can try and work your way through the depths without having to see what's underneath you, um, and actually not be too much at risk. Obviously, you've still got to worry about current and, you know, sudden drop-offs and stuff like that and, you know, actually navigating um, the terrain underneath the water. But this is actually really exciting. I'm really looking forward to having this as a feature that can be used um, just everywhere, you know. It's really going to be good. Uh, ah! And now we move on to the next thing I wanted to talk about, the garage. Um, the garage has gotten a big update. Um, this is the Warthog? No, 
the Acteon? I think, I think it's the Acteon. I'm not quite sure. The smaller trucks generally all look very similar to me. Um, but just by the look of that, that is much different to the kind of thing that we've seen in SnowRunner. Um, and it's because of this. Um, this is probably one of the, be the best ideas that they've had in a long time. So the roof racks and the side panels and the, uh, the front mounts and the rear mounts, they're all completely customizable. So you can add fuel, you can add repair points as you see fit. So we see here, um, I believe that's the Yar. Is that the Yar? No, that's maybe the. No, that's not the Yar. That could be the Sentinel. Oh, no, it's not. It's the Marshal. <laughs> it says right in the top left hand corner there. <laughs> of course it does. Just to, just to prove what an observant person I am. It's the Khan Marshal. Um, and that's the roof rack and we have seven slots in the roof and we can put different things into those seven slots so there we are adding 30 liters of fuel um, here's the Don uh, with a rear mounting point uh, we have a tire we have fuel and here we're adding 50 repair points um, so yeah so we, we're gonna we're gonna have lots more customization in terms of what we can take with us so if we're confident in our driving ability we can just load vehicles up with fuel and forgo repair points entirely so that we have range you know um if we're worried about the terrain that's coming up we can put on lots more uh repair points so that if we take a nosedive we can fix ourselves you know it's it's such a cool little system um really really nice uh, I think that covers the garage. So this was just kind of a um, an overview of what the new map looks like, and it looks like Snowrunner, but with a uh, with a little style tweak. Sorry, guys, one moment. Ah, it's better. My nose was on fire. <laughs> oh. Mm. That's the coffee done. So, um, the style of the, the game is very much like SnowRunner. It looks pretty much identical. It's like changing the font style. That's basically what they've done. They've just updated little bits uh, and made things a little bit clearer, maybe. Um, but on the whole looks the same um which is great it means it's familiar it means that you know players who really enjoy snow run like myself can jump into a game like this and be instantly on board from the get-go which is great uh yeah so extra little things binoculars i want i i'm wondering what this is going to be is this going to be something that we have all the time and we can select to use? It's, it's like, it's an odd one because it's not like we can get out of our vehicles in SnowRunner. We don't, um, unlike, like say, in Farming Sim, we can get out and run around and have a look at things. We can't do that in this game. So when are we going to be using binoculars? Are we using them from the cab? Um can we only use them in cab view, maybe? Um, something like that. We also have a compass as well, which is another interesting little point. Uh, so yeah, um, neat little extra feature there. And then we have a look at the interface. Again, very similar to SnowRunner. Pretty much everything is where you expected it to be. Um, Bottom right there, we have the gears, and then we have the controls for diff lock, all-wheel drive, parking brake, and ignition. Um, we also have two new little cursors here at the bottom. 
uh, just let me say oh, I'll just cut the screenshot off slightly here unfortunately but just here and just here we have uh, devices and inventory which naming uh, devices are probably going to be stuff like turning on metal detectors and you know echo sounders and all that kind of stuff inventory though is a new one um i did read on the steam page that you're going to be like searching for materials um maybe that's the kind of thing that uh you use to upgrade your base stuff like that so maybe you'd go out with a metal detector to search for metals which you then pick up and put in your in your um vehicle um and uh mm -hmm. and stuff like that one second guys i've just got to turn that off before it makes any more sense before i can i wonder why that has started popping up oh well never mind let's carry on um so yeah so so that's that's an interesting little thing but most important, most interestingly, uh, we have our fuel gauge and module damage, which is, I'm assuming, what this is here. But this here is much more interesting, this little gauge here. For a long time, people have been asking for tyre pressure um, system in SnowRunner, a way to adjust tire pressure put them down put them up to make certain terrain easier to manage and a lot of people myself included think yeah. this here might be what it is which would be amazing if that is the case it would be really interesting if that is indeed tire pressure we don't know it's only a it's only a theory but it looks like it could be. And that pretty much wraps up my thoughts for expeditions. So, very interested, very interested indeed um, in terms of what exactly we're going to get. It's, it's very early days. We don't even have a launch date yet. Probably sometime early to mid-24, I would imagine. Uh, but who knows? It could be a year from now. Don't know. Not a clue. But either way, it has me very intrigued. Um, very intrigued indeed. And yeah, you can bet we're going to be covering this game on this channel uh, when it comes out. So uh, watch this space.